let us look at another image. If you get this image, what are you seeing? You are seeing broad high field high field, and you can't see any septations. This is again the pass stain, and this is one of the mucorails. Okay, so this is mucor mycosis in this biopsy, right? So mucorails. These are given many special names, especially in COVID times, they became famous as the black fungi. They may be called black fungi, but they don't have melanin in their hyphal wall. They are not pheoid fungi. They are not pheoid fungi. Why are they called black fungi is they invade blood vessels. They invade blood vessels causing ischemic necrosis ischemic necrosis and the tissues turn black. The tissues turn black, hence called as black fungi. Mucorails are also called as bread molds. They are called so because if you leave food outside, the first set of fungi that is going to start to grow on that food, it could be bread, rotting fruits, etc., vegetables, it is going to be one of the mucorails, hence bread molds. They are also called as lid lifters. That's because their colonies are very, very woolly, you know, they form hyphae, which are aerial hyphae, and you know, they're rising up like that. So if you see a colony, if you're growing it in a petri plate, gradually those woolly colonies will start to lift the lid of that petri plate. Okay, so the hence called as lid lifters. With those fancy names of mucorails, let's talk business. Business is that mucorails, they belong to the phylum Glomerulomycetes. Phylum glomerulomycetes. So, what is their morphology? These are ribbon like. They don't contain melanin, so I will write high line aseptate hyphae with 90 degree or obtuse angled branching. I hope you have got your geometry right. Acute angle is nine, less than 90. Obtuse is more than 90. Obtuse angled branching. Okay. So broad ribbon like hypha and they show branching like this. Yeah, since they belong to phylum glomerulomycetes, do you remember what kind of spores do they form sexually in the teleomorph state? They form what are called as zygospores. These are the sexual spores. And what about their asexual spores? They arise on a special stalk which is called as porangiophore. And at the end of that, there is a sac like structure which is containing many sporangiospores. Okay, so this is the asexual spore of zygomycetes. Okay, so this is food that has been left outside and look at the fungi. That's a beautiful strawberry below and you can see those hyphae of mucorils, bread molds, right? And that is a lid lifting colony. Look at how woolly the colonies are. So what are the examples of zygo uh, mucorils? Mucorils are, examples are rhizopus, muca, lichthemia, Saxenia, Cunningamella, Apophysomyces. Okay, Lichthemia was earlier called as Apsidia. Okay, and please remember, mucor mycosis is the disease they cause. And it is not most commonly caused by mucor. The most common cause is rhizopus a rhizus. Most common cause of mucor mycosis is rhizopus a rhizus. Okay, let's come to the disease. Mucor mycosis was earlier called as zygomycosis, also called as phycomycosis. So, all these three are synonyms. Okay. 
phycomycosis, zygomycosis or mucormycosis. What are the risk factors? The most important risk factor is poorly controlled diabetes. Poorly controlled diabetes. Not just ketoacidosis are required. Even a purely controlled diabetes without ketoacidosis is a very important risk factor. Then other than high dose of steroids. Then patient is uh, or ha having some hematological malignancies or is receiving immunosuppressive therapy due to some transplantation and deferoxamine therapy. Oh, I missed out one out here. Raised elevated iron levels, free iron levels in the blood. Any condition in which there is there is raised iron levels in the blood is a risk factor for zygo of mucormycosis. Okay, deferoxamine acts as an iron iron chelator for the fungus. It increases the growth of the fungus in the blood. So hence, it is a risk factor if the patient is on this. Right. So these are extremely important risk factors, especially the first two. And this is the reason both these risk factors were present in COVID patients. If they were diabetic for COVID disease, they were being given high dose steroids and that led to the black fungus disease or mucormycosis in COVID patients. Okay. Right. Let's come to the types of mucormycosis. The most common type of mucormycosis is rhino oculo cerebral mucormycosis or sometimes it is written as rhino orbital cellular cerebral mucormycosis okay so here the infection starts obviously rhino sinusitis then so patient comes with complaints of some black nasal discharge the black nasal discharge is because of though that ischemia created out there nasal discharge then it spreads to the so patient will say my Pain, I have facial pain, so gradually this infection is spreading. It's an angioinvasive fungus, so it spreads to the orbits. So patient will come with on examination, proptosis, chemosis, etc., etc., or reduced visual acuity, and then it spreads to the brain. So patient will come with complaints of patient is brought in coma or is having seizures or in delirium and so on. Right. So that's the characteristic story of rhinocerebral disease starts as a sinusitis spreads then may even spread to the mouth or may spread to the orbit and the brain okay right the other types of mucormycosis is cut uh, cutaneous mucormycosis and for this risk factors for the earlier not required the ones we studied earlier so this can be acquired via any kind of trauma right so here of course on biopsy you're going to see those broad ribbon like hyphae pulmonary mucormycosis acquired by inhalation again risk factors should be present there is another gastrointestinal type of mucormycosis and disseminated type of mucormycosis okay so one two three four apart from the original one let's come to diagnosis so we're going to collect a biopsy and on biopsy, we are going to see those typical mucorils, that is broad ribbon like hyphae, like this. Look at these beautiful, you can see this 90 degree angled branching out here. Okay. Once you see on biopsy, you are seeing these aseptate hyphae, you're not even going to wait to culture which, which fungus it is. You're going to start the therapy ASAP. It's an emergency again. Why? Because all mucorails are angioinvasive. So, obviously, we are going to do a wide surgical resection, wide surgical resection, along with the drug of choice. The drug of choice is amphotericin B. Alternatives are posaconazole or Isavuconazole. Okay. And please remember fluconazole 
voriconazole as well as the caspofungin etc echinocandins these are not effective against mucorils okay with that let's take up a question a patient with a history of bone marrow transplant presented with cough chest heaviness for the last two weeks x-ray chest showed consolidation in the lung a lung biopsy was obtained on microscopic examination of the biopsy the organism appeared as shown in the image okay this is the past stain you can see the hyphal forms which are showing septations okay and you can even appreciate branching in a couple of look at this branching so this is most likely to be aspergillosis a patient with poorly controlled diabetes is brought to the emergency with complaints of fever, cough, difficulty breathing. He is diagnosed to be suffering with severe COVID-19 infection. Due to persistently low ox oxygen saturation, he started on high-dose steroids. He started complaining of facial pain and loosening of the teeth five days later. What is your diagnosis? This is most likely to be mucormycosis because this patient is already having two risk factors. One, high dose steroids, other poorly controlled diabetes and he's having those typical complaints of rhinocerebral or orbital mucormycosis. Okay. Mm -hmm.